friends welcome to your own youtube channel achievers data engineering my name is gyanendra and in this video we are going to talk about dax studio right so if you are running a lot of models your query is running slow and you have you know a lot of models that it is taking time to refresh then at this point of time you might have already started working on dax studio but if you haven't then in this video we are going to talk about all about DAX Studio. So this is part one and it would be very high level and basics to the DAX Studio. However, in upcoming video, we will talk about in details. So this video, we will introduce you why to use DAX Studio and we will get started working live on it. We will show you how to connect your Power BI instance with DAX Studio either from Power BI or in Excel. Uh, we will help you to navigate on this tool so that you can, you know, get to know what are the options and functionalities available in DAX Studio. Also, at the end of this video, we will show you how to write the query builder and we will end up writing a couple of DAX queries so that we, like, we can get you started with DAX Studio. All right, so let's get started. All right, so now I am on DAX Studio that I have already installed. Now, as of now, it's an empty screen, right? So you don't see any metadata or any models that I've imported as of now. So first of all, uh, I mean, as of now, if you haven't installed the DAX Studio, uh, you can uh, go on daxstudio.org and you can download the DAX Studio from here. Uh, it, it's pretty simple steps. You can go ahead and install and click next and like, common steps and you can go ahead and install it. Now, uh, once you will install uh, and if, once you will restart the Power BI post installing DAX Studio, it will start showing it in uh, external tools over here and it will also start to appear in your uh, Excel as well. So let's talk about why to use DAX Studio, right? So DAX Studio is actually an ultimate tool when it comes to executing DAX queries or analyzing DAX queries um, against the Microsoft tabular models. Or if you are running your performance analyzer in Power BI, then you can go ahead and, you know, upload that performance analyzer JSON file in DAX Studio and you will be able to, you know, explore the details in within DAX Studio. Along with that, in DAX Studio allows us to, you know, uh, create and display a lot of metrics information of the model uh, that we have created in Power BI or in SSAS, that um, analysis services, right? Along with this, we can also integrate a DAX Studio with Excel and whatever models or Power Pivot or Power Queries that we have used in Excel. We will be able to integrate that in DAX Studio and we can, you know, see and explore things over here in DAX Studio. So how to, you know, uh, get to uh, by that and how to start with that? Uh, let's see that actually uh, from the beginning. So actually let's get started with an Excel. And if I like close it and reopen the DAX Studio. Now, so when it's open, first of all, and it asks you to connect. So there are three options available. So the first option that says is Power Pivot Model and by default it's grayed out, we cannot select it. And uh, if you hover around this, you know, help icon or question icon, it says DAX Studio must be launched from Excel workbook containing a power pivot mode in order to use this option, right? So this is completely for Excel. And if you are, if you are using any modeling or power pivot in Excel itself, then we will be able to integrate that model over here. Now, moving towards the second option that says PBI, like Power BI or SSDT, SQL Server Data Tools model. So if I click on it, uh, as of now, I have one instance of Power BI report open over here. So it has already, you know, um, you know, seen that and identified that and it's able to, you know, uh, show it over here. So if I would have multiple Power BI files open, then it, it would show all of them over here and we will be able to select one from them. 
now the third option says a tabular uh, server so over here we can define the server of analysis services and we can you know extract that you know tabular model or mdx like tabular model from there so uh, let's get started with the first option so uh, for that let me close this instance of dax studio i'll go ahead and open an excel file a sample sales data that i already have so uh, let's wait to get it open all right so now you can see here i just have a you know sample table so it just contained data and i have connected it with a slicer so i mean nothing much and at this point of time because i have already installed dax studio in my machine if i go into add-ins in excel i will be able to see this dax studio over here now as we saw just few seconds back the first option which was power pivot that would enable only in case a dax studio is being opened from excel workbook itself so we'll go ahead and click on this and it should open an instance of dax studio and by default you will see like it has detected the file but it says warning power pivot model not detected right so as of now i have only sample table a single table that i have not used in a model or i have designed any model so that's why it, it is not actually showing any model or any details in dax studio so uh, just for the instance uh, let me uh, select all of this detail and I'll go ahead and click on design and so I'll go into the power pivot option and I will add it to a model now I just have a single table but I'll just go ahead and add this to model all right so uh, the entire thing that we do in power bi while you know uh, getting data from different sources the same things we can do over here so for example we can get data from sql or from access or um, other options available over here right so as of now uh, just for the demo purpose i'm going to select this single table only and we'll consider it as a model so i'll go ahead and save this and i'll save the workbook and now i'll go ahead and again click on add-ins and start the dax studio now this time you will notice it has detected and it has selected this power pivot model with the file name if i go ahead and click on connect so now it has identified this file name and in models it has identified that that particular table that I added in that model it has identified that and bought it over here as a model now in this particular metadata tab I have got all the fields or all the column names that I had in Excel workbook and if I hover over on any of these field names it will you know it is showing me a couple of details related to that so now I mean we are not going to talk about much into Excel so as of now let's go ahead and close this I just wanted to show it for the demo purpose now I'll go ahead and start one more you know instance of DAX studio or maybe we can go ahead and directly click on external tools in Power BI once you have installed and click on and DAX studio over here so now at this time you must have noticed that once I have opened this DAX studio directly from Power BI file then it haven't asked for that connection it haven't prompted for connection it has directly connected with the model of that particular file from which we opened this instance right so right now you can see here it has identified the file uh, this power bi file name and the model so i i am using the sample sales file in this power bi right that you can see over here and it has identified that over here along with the rest of the details so as of now let's hide these additional two tables we will talk about them in separate videos so as of now again if we check out these details if i hover over on any metadata so this is a metadata tab and we are getting the details of uh, you know all in all this table or column or measures available in power bi 
so if i hover over any of the any of this metadata then it is it is you know showing some high level details for example if i am hovering over mouse on order date then it is showing the distinct values right uh, distinct values minimum maximum and along with that it is also you know showing 10 sample values of whatever data is available in particular column now apart from this metadata if i go on second tab that says functions it will list out you know all of the functions that can be supported in this particular model so uh, for for example i have opened this dax studio instance from this file so based on the available data the number of dax which can be prepared or you know created using this dax using the available data set only there's only those dax you know would be available over here so actually pretty much all of the dax would be and uh, dax and functions would be available over here and we can use them to you know go ahead and write the queries uh, directly in this query window now moving towards the uh, you know third tab that says dmvs so uh, as of now you can understand it it kind of an object level information that we get from dmvs so we will talk about the these in great details in our upcoming videos so as of now let's go back on the you know go on the top and talk about these options available and then we will start working on writing queries so on the home ribbon the first option is a run and so whenever we will write any query over here we can go ahead and click on this run button and run we have one more option that says a clear cache and then run so for example if you are running performance you you are checking the performance of any particular dax then in that situation you would like to you know clear the existing cache and then run the query so that you can check the exact timing that would be taken by the dax right and that option is available over here as well however you can use this or this either of the option now the second option says cancel so in case a query is running that you would like to cancel or if it is taking too much time then uh, you can go ahead and click on this cancel button now third option says output now output we have multiple options so first one is grid so grid is a default option and whenever we would run any query then it will actually show that data in the grid like this uh, so if i go on for example it's kind of a sample grid or if i say let's uh, write a function over here and say evaluate evaluate and let's pass the table name all right so it is running so now you can see that uh, so actually evaluate and table name returns all the table so you can see here it has actually returned all the columns of that particular table now along with that it every time we actually hit a query it it is actually saving all the details of that particular query and whatever query we have written so far they will be saved over here and in case we want to rewrite the query that we have written earlier or we want to modify that we can double click on that and that would be populated over here again so it, it goes for the all of the queries and in the options in dax studio we can define up to how many instance of queries it should store right so by default um, it saves up to 200 i believe um, i'll mention that in comments actually how many you know uh, instance it saved but as of now it is stored up to 200 instance of queries that we can click and retrieve again all right so as of now you you can see that this default option is a grid now in case if you will select timer then actually it discards the result it uh, if you can you know check the detail it says run the query and discards the result it is only for the purpose of a recording time and uh, that's why when uh, when we want to record the time instead of showing and seeing the result we will just select the timer now the third option says file and if we select file and go ahead and click on run then it will prompt for a window where we can select that result into a csv file now 
talking about another option that says a linked Excel file and a static Excel file. So let's first talk about a static Excel file and I'll click on run. So once I'll click run and let me save it on desktop and name it as sample file. So now what DAX Studio will do, it will go ahead and you know save this result set of this query into that sample file. And it would be an static file as it says, uh, because whatever data has been extracted would be saved here and no changes would be made until we are manually you know, making any changes into it. Now, if I go ahead and close it and again, change the option as linked file and rerun this DAX query. Now, because it is going to create a linked file, so it is asking, you know, a security notice where it says a data connection have been blocked. If you choose to enable data connection, your computer may no longer be secure. So it's kind of a security prompt. So as of now, I will go ahead and click on enable. Now, DAX Studio will create that data, what, whatever has been extracted from this query into this Excel file. And if we, uh, for example, this would be linked as you can see here these options are enabled over here and if if we want we can go ahead and click on refresh and data will be refreshed if we have made any changes in the model or if you want you can see the connection information as well right All right, so now let's go ahead and close this Excel file again. I don't want to save this. Now again, uh, let's talk about the rest of the options available over here. So the another option says Query Builder. We will talk about uh, that in next video and we'll go ahead and create some you know queries using Query Builder. Now these options are straightforward, cut, copy, paste and undo, redo. Now this option says, uh, you know, format query so if we have you know like a long query that we have written over here then it gives an option where we can format that query now what it mean by format is kind of using this option we will be able to give a proper structure to the DAX so that it would be you know easy to read now we have come you know some common text functions upper lower and delimiter and we'll talk about uh, once we will use them and now the another important option available over here is a load performance data. So if you have, you know, ever, you know, gone into Power BI and if you have run the performance analyzer. So for example, if you go on view and run the performance analyzer and you start recording. So this actually, you know, you will be able to extract an JSON file from here that you can go ahead and import in DAX Studio and you will be able to see all the metrics related to the data model. Now, again, we will cover these you know, options in later videos. Uh, let's go to advanced option, advanced ribbon. Uh, over here, this import matrix is by default. We can go ahead and in, import uh, any matrix available for any you know uh, model or we can go ahead and click on export the matrix of this particular model that we are looking right now, or we can weave the matrix of, you know, this particular model. So it will, you know, share these sort of details. So we will talk about these details again in the, you know, upcoming videos. So uh, as of now, I hope it has given you some understanding of what is DAX and why do we use DAX and uh, how can you just get get started with the DAX? So uh, this video is already getting very long. So I'll go ahead and create a rest of the steps in next video. So as of now, if you have any questions related to DAX video till this point of time, please uh, do let me know the comments. And if you like the content, please don't forget to subscribe my channel to stay up to date on any latest video that I upload. Thank you for watching. Keep learning. Have a great day.